a hand crank can opener. Are you that cool? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. So we have an Evo 9 here throwing flames. Pretty sure that was on the two-step on an Infinity a few years ago. Always a good time, though. Love making boom, boom, bang, bang noises. So with that in mind, today we are going to talk about knock control, which, of course, are boom, boom, and bang, bang noises that we don't want to hear or see. Now, we've gone into depth in the AM Infinity and some of its specifics. So I'm going to go and how to do it in general. So today we're going to talk about the Haltech. Um, in part, this will also apply to a Motec. Um, Motec has uh, even more advanced because you can look at multiple signals and filter. But we're going to start with Haltech for uh, today's video and go over how they vary. And while the theory is still the same per car, there are some things that Haltech does different. So let's get to the software. And I'm going to just pick something random, but it's because it's one of Haltech's, I think, really well-supported base maps. We're going to look at an RB26. Now, they might be cost prohibitive for some of us here in the U.S. They're no longer the $4,500 car they once were. Uh, they've steadily increased in price to where it's kind of a little ludicrous. But if you get one or you do a swap, this applies, right? So we're going to talk about RB26s. This could also apply to a 4B11, 4G63, EJ25. Doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to pick this as a current example. So starting off on the engine configuration page, for one reason, is that in this particular base map, you'll see that Haltech calls bank 1, cylinders 1, 2, and 3, and bank 2 is 4, 5, 6. If you have multiple knock sensors, we need to start off by being mindful of that. Now, I'm not going to try to exaggerate. I don't know how many knock sensors are on RBs. I'm just going to presume that they have two, and then that's why they chose to do this. Looking in the wiring, it appears they have two. So, reasonably assume that that's the case. Now, the reason this is important is because in our data logging and our setup, we need to keep in mind that we have multiple channels. Don't log just one if you have multiple sensors. Um, I've messed around with it in the past. V6 really works best on one. Um, you can put multiple on it. We we see that on, on some cars. V8s will have two sometimes. Um, my EcoBoost has two. <clears throat> it also has a pretty wild ECU as far as its ability to, to look at all that data. So start there. For your particular application. Probably if you're a four cylinder, you're only going to have one. Now, the next thing that you would do is under sensors, you're going to go to knock detection. I'm not going to get into doing the spectrogram and making it knock so that we can double check um, because I'm sitting at a desk. I'm not in a car currently. But for starting our setup, very similar to the AEM and a lot of ECUs, you need to know the hertz for your bore size. And in past videos, I showed you that I use formula.net, pH instead of F. Um, they have a knock frequency calculator for the bore size for 85, 86 mil. It's 6,600 to 6,700 hertz. Uh, Good starting point there, this RB, that's where Haltech put it. The window can be a 50 degree window. You can shorten that up. Personally, I will usually do five degrees before top dead center, or excuse me, negative five after top dead center, um, and a 40 degree window. They had it a little bit 
different than that, I'd, I'd like to look at it a little bit longer, but keep in mind that that will affect your, your signal. So you might end up seeing knock that's not real, depending on how long your combustion event is. But as we pointed out in the Infinity video uh, way back when, this is a good starting point. This is where I start on the Infinities. So the next thing that we will do is we're going to go under Ignition Tuning. We're going to go down to Knock. Obviously, we need to make sure everything is enabled. Not all base maps have it enabled to begin with. Um, so make sure you turn that on. One thing that is definitely different, actually, we can see there it says Banked. So in this particular case, because we do have two sensors, or presuming we have two sensors, it's banked front and back. If it was a different motor, we might switch that to unbanked. Short-term retard. Haltech is very nice for having the little question marks to help explain things. And it's telling us that this is the amount of short-term retard that is applied when knock detection has seen the signal exceed the knock threshold. Five degrees per event is a little aggressive. That's where they start off. They're trying to be safe. Most OE style ECUs will do a third of a degree per knock event, um, knock count as we might call it. The decay is how much it adds back per engine cycle, so that's per rotation, and retard sample rate is in milliseconds, so how, how fast it's looking, which is analogous in the infinity to the, the milliseconds, or USEC, excuse me, microseconds that it's looking. Um, usually I will start off with these where they're at. This, I'll do one degree. So one thing that it does different compared to other ECUs is that when we look at the knock threshold, we have a 3D table instead of a gain function for instance, in the AEM, usually 300 is a, a good starting point, 280, somewhere in there. This is in decibels, and in their base map, it's RPM versus throttle position. Obviously, we can set throttle position to manifold pressure. We can make it more or less sensitive. If we have a built motor, we probably don't really care so much in vacuum because we're going to be picking up other engine noises. Um, this you're going to have to determine on your own. So as we're logging this, we can see their values, 28 decibels up to 50. Um, I usually start off a little bit more sensitive than that. A lower number is going to be more sensitive. So up here, I will start at 40 typically. And then might do something like that make a pull, low boost, go with timing numbers that I know should work for a given car, build that uh, knock reference map. So if I have a stock engine, you know, I might not change it at all because I do trust Haltech on their initial setup. They've done a lot of them. And I've always been impressed with how fast a RB powered anything will start on the base map, which gives me the confidence to just go with the flow and a lot of their base settings I will leave alone in this particular example. Now, if it was a built motor, you might have to numb this up. These might not work. So we can see here at 0% throttle, you might end up taking that table and transposing it all the way across. But I do suggest starting off with stock values. If you have gone from a stock RB26 or 5, now you have a built one, start with stock values or something that you determined was going to work for you previously. And typically this is going to be octane limited, so this is going to be pump cast. Um, but there are examples where you get on ethanol and you're still going to pick up noise because of how, how this functions. Um, but anyway, built motor, you might need to numb this further than where you had it for your stock motor. Now, getting into ethanol, if we're doing flex fuel, there are going to be times where you might end up with a situation, and I had this happen the other day, um, one of the cars that I've been using for videos was a Subaru, 
it it ended up being fine on pump gas. I mixed to ethanol. I'm going to switch to that one here real quick. Switch to ethanol without changing timing, without changing boost. And on E40, it started to pick up knock with no change. I can't really tell you why. Maybe it was a mixing value error. It's a built motor. I knew it was going to be noisy. And these values are to be taken with a grain of salt. This is just what I came up with um, on E10. I did start on E10, 40 to 43 and a 2,000 to 8,000. I did it versus flex fuel in this case. And then, as I said, I had this value here under E40. And with the pump gas ignition timing and pump gas boost, I started to get knock, so I started raising the values because obviously either A, this was too high, or this was too low, but either way, if they're the same, I shouldn't have seen knock on higher octane. So I presumed that these numbers needed to be raised for whatever reason. If you know why, please leave a, a comment. I'm eager to learn. I Feel it has something to do with the, the mix of ethanol and how it mixes with gasoline. I'm not a chemist. I can't say for sure. I do know that some fuels don't mix very well with ethanol, and I'm presuming that this must be a case of that. Now, I didn't get to E100. That was just as a place marker. I did get this car to E80 and, and uh, 30 pounds of boost, 31 pounds of boost on the dyno. These numbers, probably a little bit aggressive. I didn't really spend time knocking them down. I just assumed, and possibly incorrectly, that because these numbers needed raised, that at E80, these numbers were going to be raised. That being said, again, at wastegate line and pump gas timing, I didn't see any knock. Um, when we did the video on using OE strategies. If you looked carefully or go back and watch again, when I'm talking about transient spark, you can look and you can see that there was no knock correction. Um, and the knock signal in decibels, these values, was still really low. So I can pare this down, make it a little less aggressive in that particular case so that it's a little bit more accurate. Because you can make ethanol knock. It's somewhat of a misunderstanding. Possibly I've helped perpetuate the myth that because of its octane, it's, it's not going to knock. It's just like methanol. You get it in the wrong situation, it's most certainly going to knock or go even worse and go to uh, a pre-ignition state and cause severe damage. So having this set up, even on ethanol, is definitely a, a good thing to do because we don't want to risk either a our stock engine our built engine or a customer engine so having this a little bit more sensitive never hurt anybody it's just going to pull the timing out anyway so realistically there's no reason to go nuts to start with like i said i just kept going with it haven't got back to it so i know i look like a hypocrite but you know what i'll own it it's okay um, and this car is going to get a process west, so all of this could change anyway. We're going to take 17 inch out of, or 17 inch intake runner and shorten it to, I think, like eight and a half. So I'm expecting a lot of things to change on that particular car. We'll revisit the knock control. But basically, guys, that sums it up. We don't have quite the same setup on the Haltech as we do on the Infinity. I feel that. It might be a little bit more daunting um, because it looks more complicated, but realistically, it's easier to use in the end. I guess before we go, though, let's switch to the data log software and we'll look at it, that Subaru so you can see what it records for those decibel values. So let's do that right now. So here we have the decibel trace Haltech 
doesn't call it necessarily that when you go to look at it in the log. It is a knock sensor one knock signal, but then you can see the output is in decibels. We can see the peak is 46.41 decibels. Right here we are at 7400 RPM, 99% throttle. There is no ignition correction because obviously I have that value higher than this. So we can see we can come down at that particular RPM, if we switch back real fast, we would be 56, so I'm about 10 decibels high. I can probably bring that down to 49, give myself a little bit of a threshold. So maybe I will do this. I will grab the E40 as an example, and then we'll just kind of paste that over. So bam, that's fixed just by looking at a data log. And we can see it was 17 degrees of timing, so the timing's a little bit low for the fuel. But that kind of gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. And actually, we can look and see that there was some transient response down here, just to revisit that one. Throttle change was rapid, 106% per second. So it pulled 5 degrees out. Not knock, but that's that table at work that we talked about in the OE strategy video. So guys, th that really does sum this one up. You can see that Haltech Knock Control it is pretty easy to use. I think it's actually probably easier than the AEM in the end. It's just a matter of repeatability and starting with something that you know should be safe. Um, it would be very difficult to do without a dyno. Um, you can, but you will need knock ears. You will need somebody else driving. Obviously, you can't do this all at your by yourself. Um, and you need to know that it's going to sound like a crunchy aluminum can. Unfortunately, you're going to hear it after it happened um, if you don't have this set up. But using a little bit of common sense, possibly even using the values that you see here or the values in the base map as a starting point, you should be able to build a safe knock control map should you choose to use it. So I hope you guys have fun this summer as we roll into spring, get back to actually using our cars, not just building them. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.